Excess radiation from CT scans. Are we giving ourselves cancer? Should you worry about radiation from CT scans? These are just a few recent headlines addressing concern from radiation and CT. Computed tomography, CT, is a critical component in the management of patient care. In emergency departments alone, CT significantly impacts diagnosis, diagnostic confidence, and admission decisions. However, with these benefits comes increased utilization and an increase in population exposure to ionizing radiation. In 2006, Americans were exposed to seven times as much radiation from imaging procedures than in the early 1980s. CT made up only 12% of these imaging procedures, but contributed almost 50% of the radiation dose. The population radiation dose and radiation-induced ailments, specifically cancer, are the reasons we must take a closer look at how CT is used. The International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, has released a training tool called 10 Pearls Radiation Protection in CT, which can be used to assist in using CT in a responsible manner and reducing population dose. The IAEA 10 Pearls can be broken into three different categories, justification, optimization, and knowledge. Justification are decisions made before the CT scan happens. Optimization is optimizing CT scan parameters to minimize dose and optimize image quality. Knowledge is an understanding of CT dose metrics and reference dose values. The first three pearls make up section one, justification. They are, perform the scan only if it's necessary. Number two, encourage use of alternative imaging modalities that don't use ionizing radiation, such as ultrasound or MRI, especially with younger patients. And the third is always check and see if your patient is pregnant. One tool that is available to help the justification decision-making process is the ACR appropriateness criteria. The ACR appropriateness criteria is a resource provided by the ACR to help determine which radiologic procedure is most appropriate given a patient profile and set of clinical symptoms. Imaging procedures are given a rating and a relative radiation level. The higher the rating, the more appropriate the exam. Along with the relative radiation level are effective dose ranges for adults and pediatrics. Now I'm going to lump these first three pearls together as I use the ACR appropriateness criteria to see whether a CT exam is the most appropriate imaging task for a set of clinical symptoms and patient profile. You will see how all three pearls are addressed as we move through these scenarios. Scenario one, a patient shows up to the emergency room with pain in the right lower quadrant. The emergency room physician immediately suspects appendicitis. Using the ACR appropriateness criteria, we see that the first two variants for adults and adolescents the most appropriate exam is a CT abdomen pelvis with contrast. However, if we move down the list and the patient is either pregnant or 14 years old or younger, the most appropriate exam is an abdomen ultrasound. Off to the right are symbols showing the relative radiation level. You can see that the relative radiation level for the CT abdomen pelvis is relatively high, while ultrasound does not use ionizing radiation, so there is no radiation dose. Included with each imaging procedure are comments and links to supporting literature. A second scenario is a patient with acute chest pain and suspected pulmonary embolism. Now if this patient has a negative D-dimer and a low pretest probability, the recommended imaging procedure is a chest x-ray, which has relatively low radiation dose. However, if this patient has a positive D-dimer and a high pretest probability, the recommended procedures are either a CT chest with contrast, a CTA chest with contrast, or a chest x-ray. However, if the patient is pregnant, a CT is not recommended as the highest rated exam. Instead, a chest x-ray or Doppler ultrasound should be performed. In some cases, the finding of the ultrasound can eliminate the need for a CT. You can see how using the ACR appropriateness criteria is an incredibly useful tool when trying to determine whether a CT is the most appropriate imaging exam. It also greatly aids in the collaboration between referring physicians and radiologists. The second section of this training covers pearls four through nine and focuses on optimizing image quality and radiation dose during the exam. Pearl four is the first of this section and reminds us that high quality crisp images may look pretty, but they're not always necessary for the diagnostic task at hand. They also increase patient radiation dose. Radiologists, technologists, and physicists need to work together at optimizing scan parameters to allow some noise, reducing patient dose, while still maintaining the diagnostic quality. This balance of image quality and radiation dose is critical in the responsible use of CT. Pearl 5 recommends using indication-based protocols. 
For example, scans for lung nodule screening or kidney stone follow-up can be done with 50 to 75 percent less dose than a routine chest or abdomen pelvis protocol. Pearl 6 states that multi-phase exams should not be routine. Multi-phase studies can have two to three times more radiation than a single-phase study. When reviewing the ACR appropriateness criteria, there are very few, if any, instances where a multi-phase exam rates higher than a single-phase study. It is recommended that radiologists review all protocols and limit multi-phase exams to specific situations. Pearl 7 and 8 are related to each other and can be combined. Pearl 7 reminds users to adjust scan parameters based on body habitus and the body part being examined. Pearl 8 stresses the importance of knowing your equipment more specifically understanding how your automatic exposure control operates. Most modern CT scanners have MA modulation, and many newer scanners also offer KV modulation, organ dose reduction, and iterative reconstruction options. If set up correctly, these features automatically optimize dose and image quality, greatly reducing patient dose. However, understanding what drives these features and utilizing them correctly is critical. An example of this is the noise index with GE scanners or the SD setting with Toshiba scanners. Noise index and SD settings are inversely related with patient dose. For example, if you were to decrease the noise index or the SD by 5%, the patient dose would increase by about 10%. Conversely, if you were to increase the noise index or SD setting by 5%, your patient dose would go down by about 9%. Along with the noise index and SD settings, it's vital to understand what other scan parameters may affect your MA or KV modulation. On some scanners, decreasing your slice thickness while keeping the same noise index or SD setting can dramatically increase patient dose. Pearl 9 is the last of this section and is about appropriate scan techniques. Protocols should be set up with correct KVP and mass or AE settings. Specific protocols should be built for pediatric patients and when appropriate, the KVP reduced and or the pitch increased. Centering patients in the gantry is also critical as having a patient just six centimeters off center can increase your dose by up to 100%. Also, reducing scan length and scanning only the region that is necessary can reduce radiation dose by 20 to 30%. Therefore, all protocols should have clear start and end locations based on clinical indications. The last section and last of the 10 pearls focuses on knowledge and reviews CT dose metrics and CT reference dose values. Many states and regulatory bodies, such as the Joint Commission, require that CT technologists verify if a patient dose is appropriate before and after each CT exam. In order to do this, we need to know what CT dose metrics mean and what an appropriate CT dose is. To start with, there are two main dose metrics in CT, the CTDI vol, or the Volume Computed Tomography Dose Index, and the DLP, the Dose Length Product. These values are reported on the CT scanner before and after each CT exam. Now before I get too far, neither the CTDI vol or the DLP is true patient dose. The relationship between patient dose and CTDI vol and DLP is a bit complex and depends on many factors including patient size and composition. CTDI vol is reported in the units of milligray for either a 16 or 32 centimeter acrylic phantom. The 16 centimeter phantom is used when reporting the CTDI vol for head and for some pediatric body scans, depending on your scanner. The 32 centimeter phantom is used when reporting the CTDI vol for adult torso and body scans. The second dose metric is the DLP, or the dose length product. The DLP is the product of their irradiated scan volume multiplied by the average CTDI vol for that scan length. The units of DLP are milligray centimeter. DLP is typically summed up for all series of an exam. From that, an estimated effective dose can be calculated. With this understanding of CT dose metrics, it's important to have a familiarity of typical CT doses. The ACR and the NCRP have published reference dose values for several CT exams. Reference dose values are based on the 75th percentile for a given exam. That means that 75% of doses should be at or below that specific reference dose. Another recent publication introduced a relatively new term called the achievable dose, which is based on the 50th percentile. Using these reference and achievable doses allows technologists to be able to identify if something is not as it should be. This helps ensure that patient doses are kept as low as reasonable. In conclusion, the 10 pearls of radiation protection in CT is a valuable resource to aid in reducing CT dose. As radiation or imaging professionals, we have the responsibility to justify, optimize, and be knowledgeable when it comes to CT exams. If we are able to follow these steps, population radiation dose will be reduced and the overall quality of healthcare improved.